Below is an expanded version of the provided transcript from Andrew Huberman's podcast, elaborated to reach approximately four zero 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 words while maintaining the original structure, key points, and scientific insights. The expansion includes additional context, explanations, examples, and actionable details to deepen the discussion on emotions, the brain, body connection, the vagus nerve, nutrition, the gut microbiome, and mindset effects. The tone remains consistent with Huberman's conversational yet informative style, blending scientific rigor with accessibility. Andrew Huberman, welcome to Huberman Lab Essentials, where we revisit past episodes to bring you the most potent and actionable science, based tools for mental health, physical health, and performance. Music playing my name is Andrew Huberman, and I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. This podcast is separate from my teaching and research roles at Stanford, allowing me to share the latest scientific insights directly with you. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of emotions, a topic that defines our lived experience. Emotions are at the heart of what it means to be human. Whether we're feeling joyful, sad, angry, or anxious, these states color our perception of the world and shape our interactions. Yet, despite their centrality to our lives, many people don't fully understand how emotions arise or how they can be influenced. Emotions are not just abstract feelings floating in our minds. They are deeply rooted in the intricate interplay between our brain and body. In this episode, we'll explore the biology of emotions, focusing on the neural circuits chemical pathways, and bodily processes that give rise to these experiences. We'll also discuss practical tools rooted in nutrition, the gut, brain axis, and mindset that you can use to modulate your emotional states. One of the key takeaways today is that emotions are not solely a product of the brain. The body plays a critical role, and the connection between the two is mediated by pathways like the vagus nerve. We'll also examine how what we eat, the state of our gut microbiome, and even our beliefs about food can profoundly influence our mood and motivation. This conversation will blend insights from evolutionary biology, neuroscience, and psychology, drawing on a rich history of scientific thought that stretches back centuries. Let's get started. The universality of emotions and their evolutionary roots the study of emotions has a long and storied history, with contributions from philosophers, scientists, and thinkers across cultures. One of the most influential figures in this field is Charles Darwin, who proposed that emotions are universal and that certain emotional expressions, particularly facial expressions, are shared across all human societies. For example, a smile of happiness or a grimace of disgust tends to look similar whether you're in New York, Tokyo, or a remote village in the Amazon. Darwin's ideas, outlined in his 1008, 172 book, The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Animals, suggested that these expressions evolved because they served adaptive functions, helping our ancestors survive and reproduce. For instance, when we encounter something appealing, say, a delicious piece of fruit or a pleasant smell, we tend to lean forward, inhale deeply, and engage with it. This approach. Behavior is hardwired into our biology, encouraging us to seek out resources that support survival, like nutrient-rich foods. Conversely, when we encounter something aversive, like a foul odor or a bitter taste, we pull back, wrinkle our nose, and avoid it. This avoidance of behavior protects us from potential dangers such as toxic substances. These push-pull dynamics, attraction versus aversion, form the foundation of our emotional experiences. Darwin's ideas have been built upon by modern researchers who have identified specific neural circuits that govern these behaviors. In the brain, we have go circuits, primarily located in the basal ganglia, that drive action and motivation urging us to pursue rewards. We also have no-go circuits that inhibit action, helping us pause or retreat from threats. 
These circuits are not just abstract concepts. They are physical networks of neurons that communicate using chemicals called neurotransmitters and neuromodulators, such as dopamine and serotonin. Understanding these circuits allows us to see emotions not as mysterious or intangible, but as biological processes that can be studied and, to some extent, controlled. The brain-body connection. The vagus nerve at the core of today's discussion is the brain-body relationship, which is beautifully exemplified by the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, or the tenth cranial nerve, is one of the most remarkable structures in the human body. It serves as a bi-directional superhighway carrying information between the brain and various organs, including the heart, lungs, stomach, intestines, and immune system. The word vagus comes from Latin, meaning wandering, which is fitting because this nerve extends far and wide, touching nearly every major organ in the torso. The vagus nerve is unique because it operates in two directions. It has sensory fibers that collect information from the body and send it to the brain, informing us about the state of our internal environment. For example, it detects changes in heart rate, breathing patterns, and the chemical composition of the gut. It also has motor fibers that allow the brain to send commands back to the body, regulating functions like digestion, heart rate, and immune responses. This bidirectional communication makes the vagus nerve a critical player in emotional regulation. To illustrate the vagus nerve's role, consider how you feel when you're hungry versus when you've just eaten a satisfying meal. When your stomach is empty, the vagus nerve signals this to the brain, triggering feelings of restlessness or irritability, emotions that motivate you to seek food. After a meal, the vagus nerve detects the presence of nutrients and signals a state of fullness, promoting feelings of calm and contentment. These emotional shifts are not just psychological. They are driven by the vagus nerve's ability to sense and respond to bodily states. The vagus nerve and nutrition, a hidden influence on craving one of the most fascinating aspects of the vagus nerve, is its role in how we process food and how food, in turn, shapes our emotions. Let's take a closer look at sugar as an example. Most of us know that sweet foods taste good and we naturally crave them, but the story is more complex than taste alone. Within your stomach and intestines, there are specialized neurons called neuropod cells that act as sensors for sugar. These cells don't rely on your taste buds. They detect the chemical presence of sugars in the gut and send this information to the brain via the vagus nerve. This gut-to-brain signaling triggers the release of dopamine, a neuromodulator often described as the feel-good chemical. Dopamine is associated with reward, motivation, and craving, making you want more of whatever you just consumed. Remarkably, Experiments have shown that this craving persists even when taste is eliminated. In studies where participants' taste buds were numbed and they were blindfolded to prevent visual cues, they still preferred sugary foods over non-sugary ones. Why? Because the gut's sugar sensors, communicating through the vagus nerve, were driving the desire. This discovery has profound implications for how we think about food and emotions. Many processed foods contain hidden sugars, sugars you can't taste but that your gut detects. These hidden sugars can hijack your brain's reward system, making you crave more of those foods without consciously understanding why. For example, savory foods like pizza, salad dressings, or even bread can contain added sugars that trigger dopamine release, subtly shaping your eating behavior. This is a powerful example of a gut feeling that operates below the level of awareness, guiding your actions through chemical signals. Amino acids and the building blocks of emotion beyond sugars, the vagus nerve also senses other nutrients, such as fats and amino acids, which play a critical role in emotional regulation. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and they are essential not only for physical health, but also for brain function. The brain uses amino acids to synthesize neurotransmitters and neuromodulators, which directly influence mood and motivation. One key amino acid is L-tyrosine, 
found in foods like meats, nuts, and some plant-based sources. L-tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine, meaning the body converts it into dopamine through a series of chemical steps. When you eat foods rich in L-tyrosine, the vagus nerve detects these amino acids in the gut and signals the brain, which can lead to increased dopamine production. This boost in dopamine enhances motivation, focus, and a general sense of well-being, making you more likely to pursue goals or enjoy activities. However, the relationship between L-tyrosine and dopamine is not without caveats. Some individuals have naturally low dopamine levels, which can manifest as low motivation, depression, or even neurological conditions like Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's dopamine, producing neurons degenerate, leading to symptoms like tremors, movement difficulties, and mood disturbances. Medications like L-dopa, a precursor to dopamine, are used to treat these symptoms by boosting dopamine levels. For healthy individuals, supplementing with L-tyrosine available over-the-counter can temporarily increase dopamine, enhancing mood and alertness. However, caution is warranted. High doses or chronic use of L-tyrosine supplements can disrupt dopamine pathways, leading to a crash in energy and mood, or even brain fog. Always consult a health care provider before starting supplements, especially if you have conditions like mania, where excess dopamine could exacerbate symptoms. Another critical amino acid is tryptophan, found in foods like turkey, eggs, and certain grains. Tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin, a neuromodulator associated with feelings of calm, contentment, and well-being. Unlike dopamine, which drives pursuit and craving, serotonin promotes a state of satisfaction with the present moment. Eating foods rich in tryptophan can increase serotonin in production, which is why a carbohydrate. Heavy meal often leaves you feeling relaxed or even sleepy. This is partly because carbohydrates trigger insulin release, which helps shuttle tryptophan into the brain where it's converted into serotonin. The gut, brain axis, and the microbiome so far, we've focused on the vagus nerve as a key player in the gut, brain axis, but there's another major component we need to discuss, the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome refers to the trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, and fungi that live in your digestive tract. These microbes are not just passive residents. They actively influence your health, digestion, immune system, and crucially, your emotions. The gut microbiome communicates with the brain through multiple pathways, including the vagus nerve. For example, certain gut bacteria produce metabolites that stimulate vagal nerve endings, sending signals to the brain that can alter mood or behavior. Other microbes influence the production of neurotransmitters like serotonin, much of which is synthesized in the gut. In fact, about 90% of the body's serotonin is produced in the gut, although the serotonin that affects mood is primarily made in the brain's RAF nucleus. Supporting a healthy gut microbiome is essential for emotional well-being. One of the best ways to do this is by consuming fermented foods such as yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, and kombucha. These foods contain live beneficial bacteria probiotics that can enhance the diversity and health of your microbiome. Studies suggest that eating just two servings of fermented foods per day can improve mood, digestion, and immune function. Prebiotics, NAND. Digestible fibers found in foods like onions, garlic, and bananas also support the microbiome by feeding beneficial bacteria. However, more is not always better. Taking high doses of probiotic supplements can sometimes lead to brain fog, a state of mental sluggishness and difficulty concentrating. This may occur because an overabundance of certain bacteria, like lactobacillus, disrupts the gut's delicate balance. Moderation is key, and for most people, a varied diet that includes fermented foods and prebiotics is sufficient to maintain a healthy microbiome. The role of omega-3 fatty acids, another nutritional factor that profoundly affects emotions, is the balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3s found in fatty fish, flax seeds, and walnuts are anti 
inflammatory and support brain health. Omega-6 is found in vegetable oils and processed foods, are pro-inflammatory when consumed in excess. Modern diets often have a skewed omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, with far more omega-6 is, which can contribute to inflammation and mood disorders. Research has shown that increasing omega-3 intake can have antidepressant effects. In a landmark study, 1, 0, 0, 0 milligrams per day of EPA, a type of omega-3 found in fish oil was as effective as 20 milligrams of fluoxetine Prozac in reducing symptoms of major depression. Combining EPA with a low dose of fluoxetine produced even better results, suggesting a synergistic effect. These findings highlight the power of nutrition as a tool for mental health, though omega-3 should be used as part of a holistic approach that includes sleep, exercise, and social connection. Mindset and the power of belief finally, let's explore how our beliefs about food can shape our emotional and physiological responses. My colleague at Stanford, Dr. Alia Crum, has conducted groundbreaking research on mindset and its effects on the body. In one study, participants were given a milkshake and their levels of g ghrelin, a hormone that signals hunger, were measured. One group was told the shake was a low-calorie, healthy option, while the other was told it was a decadent, high-calorie treat. In reality, both groups received the same shake. The results were striking. The group that believed they were consuming a high-calorie shake experienced a greater reduction in g ghrelin, signaling a sense of fullness and satisfaction. This demonstrates that our expectations and beliefs can directly influence our physiology, a phenomenon known as a top-down effect. Similar mindset effects have been observed in other areas, such as pain perception and stress responses, underscoring the profound interplay between mind and body. Putting it all together, actionable tools today, we've taken a deep dive into the biology of emotions, exploring how the brain and body work together to shape our feelings. Here are some practical takeaways to apply in your life. Leverage the vagus nerve. Engage in practices that stimulate the vagus nerve, such as deep breathing or mindfulness, to promote calm and emotional balance. Eat for dopamine and serotonin. Include L-tyrosine, rich foods meats, nuts for motivation and tryptophan, rich foods turkey, eggs for relaxation. Be mindful of hidden sugars that can drive unconscious cravings. Support your microbiome. Consume two servings of fermented foods daily and include prebiotic, rich foods like garlic and bananas. Avoid oversupplementing with probiotics to prevent brain fog. Balance omega-3 and omega-6 is. Increase omega-3 intake through fish, flax seeds, or supplements consult a doctor to support mood and reduce inflammation. Mind your mindset. Be aware of how your beliefs about food influence your body's responses. Approach eating with intention and positivity to enhance the benefits of nutrition.